everyone here in person and those of you joining us online as well. Today we are reading Larry Gets Lost in Texas. Larry is making his way across the United States to visit us here at the Children's Museum. So let's get started. Larry Gets Lost in Texas by Michael Mullen and John Skews. This is Larry. This is Pete. They like riding together in the back seat. The family loved going to adventurous places. This new one was all about wide open spaces. At the first stop, there was a hill, and on top was a star then the biggest boots Larry had seen by far. They drove a long while through a curious place. At first it looked empty, but that wasn't the case. While Pete ate with his parents at a picnic spot they'd found, Larry stayed in the trailer with the windows rolled down. Larry's hunger was something he could never hide and a tangy smell swirled through the air just outside. It was some kind of meat on a sauce-covered bun. He could get it and eat it before Pete was done. Larry made his decision and pounced on his treat, but there was so much food it took a long time to eat. His tummy full, he came up gasping for air and saw that his best friend Pete wasn't there. Back on the ground was a strange little guy who walked up right up to Larry as if to say, hi. His outside looked hard, like a rock or a shell, but he could offer no help from what Larry could tell. Larry searched the whole lot, not once but twice, till he saw a trailer with a creature who seemed very nice. Without Pete, Larry had no clue what to do. Then his friend nodded as if to say, there's room for you, too. Riding in comfort, Larry thought, what a lucky day. But Pete and his parents had gone the opposite way. Larry saw cars like trees sticking out of the ground. While at a huge park, Pete's pup wasn't around. Larry stopped in a place where the whole town goes, and he saw his new friend dress up in fine clothes. Almost everyone there wore the same kind of hat, but not one of them knew where Pete was at. <laughs> On his search, Larry saw some pretty strange birds. It was hard to find proper descriptive words. Some big ones were eating at a steady pace, while scary ones swooped around another place. Pete, Mom, and Dad arrived at a shore with a ship museum and lots to explore. Two sculptures pointed west. Was that a clue that might lead the family to you-know-who? Lots of people were at an old building of stone, but Larry didn't see Pete. He was still all alone. While watching people shop and eat, Larry heard a voice that sounded like Pete's. He looked around here and there, but didn't see him anywhere. Pete and his folks visited an amazing place with a big rocket for flying to outer space. Pete learned about the training that astronauts do. He only wished Larry could have learned this stuff too. And later nearby in a bustling town, Pete didn't see Larry while he was walking around. In a quieter place, Larry thought all hope might be lost till he was stopped by a man whose path he had crossed. The man was dressed in cowboy gear. 
He took Larry's collar and said, let's looky here. The cowboy drove Larry to yet another city. The places they passed were exciting and pretty. A flying red horse was quite a neat trick, and one building looked like a lollipop stick. Larry came to a huge fair that was jam-packed and loud. How would he ever find Pete in this crowd? There was music and all kinds of food end to end, but he had to stay focused and look for his friend. When a giant said, howdy folks, and pointed the way. Larry ran up to Pete and they both yelled, hooray! To the helpful man, they said their goodbyes, then boarded a wheel of enormous size. Pete and Larry didn't have long to enjoy the ride. They fell asleep soon after getting inside. <laughs> the end. Thank you so much for joining us today. And be sure to join us again next Tuesday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time, where Larry gets lost in the Twin Cities. Have a great day, everyone.